Hello, everyone. My name is Brady Andrews. I am a solution architect with LogicWorks. We are an AWS Premier partner, as well as a Microsoft Gold partner and Azure expert MSP. Um, typically, we provide professional and managed services for customers looking to either migrate to the cloud or maybe they're already in the cloud and would want to operate in a more uh, efficient and automated fashion. Uh, these are usually hyper compliant customers with mission critical applications. So they could include HIPAA, PCI, um, high trust, compliances like that, SOC 1, SOC 2. Um, and some of these are the, the SaaS platforms that we interact with every day um, and don't really know. So bank softwares, um, hospital softwares like MRI softwares, um, all these things that are hyper-regulated. And a lot of those customers come to LogicWorks to um, establish an environment with best practices that fall in line with those um, compliance requirements. Today, we're going to be talking about establishing a multi-account architecture on AWS by le uh, leveraging Control Tower. Um, so at scale, we're going to have a number of different teams that all have their own requirements. Um, and with those requirements, we want to establish a principle of least privilege. Um, we don't think that someone that is working on a client portal or a web app team should maybe have the same permissions um, for someone that's in the accounting department or specifically only dealing with compliance. Um, with a bit of a smaller shop, uh, I do understand people wear multiple hats. Um, and so those permissions kind of follow suit, but um, at scale, having everyone um, or too many people with full cross account admin access, um, it doesn't fall in line with the principle of least privilege. And so that's kind of a best practice we want to establish upfront and something that Control Tower, Control Tower does very well. Uh, traditionally, you could handle this in a hub and spoke model with just VPC um, prior to using something like landing zones and now AWS Control Tower. So you can do this where the compliance, as you can see in the middle, has read-only access to both the environments and um, you know the web app people are strictly in the web application uh, network and their VPC and then the client portal is only routed towards the client portal network. I'm in accounting just directed towards AWS Cost Explorer. Um, while this is manageable, when you start adding SDLC tiers and you start having to add more VPCs to do more um, network isolation, uh, you can either run into service limits with VPCs or you're just adding complexity. Um, so there's certainly multiple ways to go about this. And one of them is using Control Tower to separate each of those functions out by accounts. So you'll have a central management master account with subsequent accounts underneath all separate, separated out by, um, they can be things like just the business needs, like the, the previous slide that went over these uh, client portal compliance, web app and accounting. So when we add the SDLC tiers in there, they can be specific to that team, that business unit. So that falls in line with um, the IAM permissions and all the services that we would need for, maybe, let's say auditing our client portal account and our web app. Uh, but maybe not auditing our accounting or, or another backend, uh, just a, a sandbox environment. So it's the, the physical separation from an account structure perspective into things that might make a little more sense um, as far as even when you're adding those SDLC tiers. A big play for this is compliance. Like I said, with the, um, the HIPAA compliant customers, the PCI compliant customers, the scope that it will take to perform the audit um, will be much faster if you have this sort of account, multi-account structure. So you don't need to put everything in one giant monolith anymore and then sift through it to see, okay, is everything that would be scoped on the table and are we discussing it and is it compliant? You can have compliance governance over specific accounts so that the time that it takes to perform those, let's say PCI audit, is targeted towards the resources that we know from a foundational level are designed to be um, PCI compliant. So it takes a lot of the uh, sifting through the weeds uh, completely out of the picture. Um, and so why multiple accounts? Well, it can be just between prod, dev, test, you know, you name it, the different SDLC tiers. Um, also, like we mentioned earlier with the IAM roles, permissions and users and groups, having those specific to, let's say that web app account, or let's say just the accounting team. So it's still 
um, you know, holding true that principle of least privilege. Um, when it comes to resiliency, the you're limiting the blast radius because you have to grant cross account access with an IM role. It's not going to be something that's there by default. So if there were for some reason intrusion to um, one of the accounts, it's not going to be a direct link to the rest of your infrastructure. So there is some security um, with that as well. And like we just mentioned previously, the, the isolation for a more calculated and, and faster audit process can be established by separating, if you choose to, your accounts based on what's needing compliance and then what's um, not requiring compliance. So this is where control tower comes in again. So it's a very prescriptive, secure, multi-account architecture. Um, it previously was landing zones and there were pipelines and processes you had to follow to update your pipeline. And um, it, filled in, it filled a need uh, um, in the industry, but I like to think that it wasn't as user-friendly. So when we want to introduce um, orchestration and automation, like these are words that we hear that we want to hear simplicity with. You know, it's got to give me my time back, and allow me to do things correctly and eliminate human error. Um, there's a bit of a manual process with landing zones. And so this is the successor to that, that is much more predefined, self-service, user-friendly. And, and a big thing is that going from landing zones to control tower, you're no longer required to go through a partner to, to start that process. I mean, previously, you couldn't just be like, you know what, I want to do landing zones. And from my own uh, console, just spin it up. So it's a lot more user-friendly, a lot more ready to go. Um, uh, yes. So when you start with Control Tower, it's gonna launch four accounts by default. Uh, the master account's not gonna have any actual workloads running in it or any customer data. It's mainly gonna be Lambda, organizations, account vending machine, and the service catalog. Uh, it's going to separate to the master account, a shared services, a logging account, and a security account. That's that's a out of the box prescriptive. These are the four accounts you should have. Um, everything that's going to be shared amongst multiple accounts is obviously going to go into the shared services account, um, like your directory services. But really, this is a a bird's eye view of what's going to be enabled out of the box when I start, so then I can really get my organization and my workloads um, into the control tower. So that can be things like making sure cloud trails and configure enabled, uh, making sure that the VPC flow logs are being routed to the logging account. Um, so it's, it's all these guardrails that are initially default out of the box ready so that um, migrating to the cloud and then operating um, is less complex and, and thus quicker time to market. With LogicWorks, we really suggest um, going beyond just those initial four accounts and one of the biggest ones that I like to point out is the networking one. Um, that's something that isn't in that initial four, but um, the billing tools and network, those are the two that we that we would add on um, when someone does a control tower deployment with us. Uh, and so just a general use case is large bank. Uh, we, the, the, the large bank is, is redacted as far as the actual name, but we've all been to large banks and interacted with these softwares or we get pinged notifications on our phone. Um, and so they don't stop. They can't have downtime. They, they got to be compliant. And so these giant corporations, um, just as an example at scale, they have a number of teams. They all have different goals. They, they likely have all different tools that they're using to try to achieve a similar business outcome. Um, and so how do we migrate to the cloud, or how do we maybe fix the problem that we already have when we're existing in the cloud of, we need to be able to work on a universal foundation that will let us work with our homegrown skills. Cause we're not all gonna have the same skill sets because we have different business needs. We have different uh, team members. And so the idea is not to disrupt existing processes and maybe just polish it. And so, this use case came with two on-prem data centers with direct connects into the network account. And so the reason why previously I was like, we really suggest going in with a network account instead of just the four uh, default accounts that get deployed with control tower um, is because that's gonna be your center point to go, let's for the, for example, these through these Cisco CSRs and then out to the rest of the accounts. And so you're not having, um, and that's based on roles, permissions, it, it's, it's a hub and spoke model, but through 
a, a control tower approach. So with centralized logging, um, you know, IDS, IPS, you're simplifying um, how do I manage my network? How do I audit the network and troubleshoot? Um, so not having to apply multiple policies to every single account because you're doing so at a, at a real high 30,000 foot view at the, the network uh, account is just further establishing um, a repeatable process for when you scale that has um, guard, guardrails in place to really protect uh, the customer. So we can see there's ID, uh, IDS and vulnerability scanning in the security accounts, an S3 bucket in the logging account. The master account, like we mentioned previously, does not have anything in it. It's not gonna have any workloads running it. Um, separated out by application and shared. So we're gonna likely share Bastion servers. We're gonna share Active Directory, um, but we need to still isolate the applications that some of these workers uh, and customers are gonna be working on like Jira, Confluence, maybe databases. So the, in, the, in the spirit of the principle of least privilege, again, we shouldn't have people that have access to cross account unless it's really necessary. So that's why by default, that's not going to be an out of the box feature. You, you'd have to go set up a cross account role and, and associate it. Account factory is an, a really piece, a really awesome piece of automation with LogicWorks that um, makes this process really repeatable as you scale. So if you're a PCI compliant customer or you're a HIPAA compliant customer, um, you name it. So when you create a stack set, the, the whole idea around this is templatizing um, as much of a buzzword. It's templatizing the approach of scaling and adding new accounts. Um, so it's going to work with service catalog, AWS organizations, Lambda, and, and whether it's a cloud formation stack set or whether it's a Terraform stack set, if you're more, you know, prefer Terraform, it's going to have config, cloud trail, encryption. It's going to go through the guardrails that you've deemed, you know, either whether LogicWorks is deemed a compliant or, or the customer has said, you know, this is kind of our custom guardrail that we'd like. It's going to be a repeatable process. And so that's, I think, removing the human error and adding simplicity, it falls back into the earlier point of, you know, why do we want to introduce things that have automation and orchestration? I think it's for those points exactly. Um, and so whether you're in a smaller shop or scaling up, uh, those points still remain true. You really want to give the most time back to the developers to drive innovation with those apps and less about managing infrastructure and permissions and all these things. You know, when you move from on-prem to the cloud, you're like, okay, now I get to focus on the applications. Um, so, so starting uh, with a diligent approach to how are we going to lay out the, the account structure, we'll pay dividends you know, down the road to give you that time back uh, being a developer. Something really awesome and a really great play for this that will um, show what the Linkit use case is for SaaS customers. So like we said earlier with, you can separate it by compliance and non-compliance, or I can separate it by just business unit. Uh, well, you can also set up to where these accounts, each of them are a single tenant customer that um, you're gonna have a very good billing uh, dashboard to look at each specific account. And you're no longer gonna have to try to splice up your monthly recurring usage a million ways to figure out, okay, what did client one use? And you know what are we gonna bill them back or what are we gonna charge them back? So just from um, a chargeback perspective, this is what it's gonna look like is you could see customer one, two, three, four, or you could see this as, you know, AWS account rep four, that's our developer. He spun up $5 of, of, in a test environment. And so having that organization is great, but I think also a point that um, isn't mentioned much is, you know, you need to know when it's time to decommission a resource. I think there's a lot of um, not rogue resources, but ones that maybe you pay for whenever maybe it was in a test and dev environment and it's time to uh, decommission it. And we already have the, the equivalent in production. And so it's, it's a great cost, cross account billing cost um, resource center. So that's probably an, uh, one of the best use cases for SaaS with a control tower deployment is the chargeback feature. A case study I wanted to go over was Linkit. They were a uh, ed tech SaaS platform that will house the data, run analytics on it, and allow decision makers to make um, informed decisions based on student performance, what's working, what's not working. Um, I have my grandfather worked in education as well. And so having a, an efficient pipeline to make 
a decision with what are we going to do with the future? You know, the next generation of students, regardless whether it's K through 12, all the way up to higher education, um, having a, an, an out of control or a cloud sprawl uh, environment and not being able to focus your attention strictly on um, critical decisions that will benefit not only the customers, the SaaS customers, but also the students. Um, you know, you don't want to waste time feeling like you don't have control over this environment. Um, we had a, a Linkit that was just growing year over year at a crazy amount. And so the more they grew and the more they were spending, it just felt a little bit more um, of, a, of a hurdle to try to wrap their arms around this thing. And so um, what we were able to do is run a well-architected review, which is a, a pretty routine professional service that myself and my team members run to really dive into multiple pillars of what ADOS deems a well-architected environment. Uh, what are we doing with cost optimization? Is it secure? Is it reliable? Is it performing? And is it operationally excellent? Um, with control tower and a well-architected review and implementing uh, reserved instances and right sizing, we're able to largely decrease their monthly usage uh, while they still maintained the revenue growth and data growth from anywhere from 40 to 50% to 60 to 80% respectively. Um, so they were really able to wrap their arms around it. And that includes um, adding a 24 by seven, 365, doesn't sleep, doesn't take holidays off, engineering support, patching, monitoring, and additional uh, cost management going forward. And so I think that's, that's really the, the, when they moved it over to Control Tower, implemented some managed services, wrapped their arms around it, did a, a professional services engagement to figure out what are we doing well? What are, what are some areas of improvement? That, that combination really um, paid dividends for that company. It's a partnership we really enjoy. Excellent. Well, this is a great, this is a great way to start finishing things up, Brady, to illustrate mm -hmm. how LogicWorks has such expertise in education. 